So here we are. We're sitting around. We have our nice little organizations, our nice little Hasbara Israel advocacy organizations, and we're sitting and we're saying, Oi, woe is me. How could it be? They're throwing bricks at us again. Please, New York Police Department, please, de Blasio, help us, help me. Please, UN, how can you pass? You know, I just saw today from UN Watch, they passed, they showed like little flags. How many resolutions were passed against, you'll see like Venezuela, Cuba, North Korea, you know, some other rogue states, and then you'll see Israel, and you'll see like zero, 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 next to Israel is nine, zero, zero, zero. We're sitting and complaining, please, UN, what's your problem? We're, we're, you know, look at look at all the help we, you know, people we help. We look at, all, you know, every every time there's a hurricane and an earthquake somewhere in the world, we come. We're the first ones there. You know, we're a startup nation. We built a microchip. We did you know, medical technology. This, that, water. You know, desalinization, water technology. Blah 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 blah. To the high heavens, friends. You know, I have a friend. She has this famous phrase. <laughs> when you tell her all the stuff that you're doing. And all the stuff that you're involved in, and all the stuff you've done, and all the, you know, all your excuses. She has a very famous, very short phrase. Two words. Nobody cares. This is my word to the Hasbarists, to the Israel advocacy people. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Period. Nobody cares that we're getting a brick thrown in our face. Nobody cares that we're getting literally feces thrown at us at the UN. Nobody cares that there's been rockets at our homes in 2005, maybe before that, rocks thrown, rockets, you know, Molotov cocktails, bombs, AK-47s. Nobody cares. Okay? We have to help, help ourselves. We have to strengthen, strengthen ourselves spiritually. We have to educate our children just with Torah. I'm not saying slap a black hat on anybody, grow pay us and run around, I don't know, whatever, Sameya Sharim, Bnei Brak, Judea and Samaria. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for the Jewish people to come back to their Torah, to come back to Hashem, to understand who they are, to show the world unabashedly, without shame, what, who they are, what's their culture, where they've come back to, that we've come back to Jerusalem, that we've come back to our to Judea and Samaria, the cradle of, Jew of Jewish civilization, that we're not ashamed of that. You know, every year you go to APAC, you go to all these all these events, and we're ashamed. You know, we're still talking about this. The fact that the two-state solution is, is a conversation, and, and we have a prime minister who double talks. He goes, he says one thing to one group of people and another thing to another group of people, and he's just like keeping the status quo and keeping everything at bay. He's not he's not talking from a position position of strength and pride and, and, and just owning our stuff, owning our S-H-I-T, just own, let's own it. Hashem gave it to us on a silver platter, 1967. You know, we got Jerusalem back. Ladies and gentlemen, why do you think there was something called the Balshuva movement? People who are secular coming back all of a sudden in, the, in, the, in that part of the world, in the, in the late 60s, part, part of, uh, not the world, part of history, started coming back to the Torah. There was a Balshuva movement. You know, but they say for every person who went off the derech, there was one, you know, one person who that became Balshuva, who came back, right? And then you saw what happened in the world, you know, these revolutions and these, you know, the hippie movement and all this stuff. This is not, this is not like a coincidence, it's not an accident that all these things started happening as soon as the Jewish people got Jerusalem back. And all of a sudden, you know, as my friend Rabbi Glazer, Yom Tov Glazer says, you know, this holy hippies who were taking LSD, some rabbi came up to him, oh, have you heard about things beyond space and time? Yeah, I've, I've been there. Okay, so we have it too. And all these hippies were like, okay, tell me more. You know, Hasidut, the Kabbalah, and all these things. And the Balchul movement started. It's not an accident. And now we're sitting here, you know, what, 52 years later, and we're still talking about, oh, somebody's throwing a brick in my face, and somebody's passing resolutions. They passed a resolution that Zionism is, anti, is, 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 is racism in the 70s. If that wasn't a signal to you guys that, like, the UN is a garbage organization anyway, and the signal to you guys that, like, this stuff is never going to go away, no matter how much you fight it, how many symposiums, like today I'm going to the symposium. 
I'm really, I'm really curious to hear what people have to say. Some of these people are Orthodox Jews, some of these people are secular. I'm really, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, where you're going to go to this event today in Manhattan, I'm really curious to, what, to hear what you have to say. Oh, well, we're doing this work, and, and we, we set up a legal you know, society and a legal fund to fight this and Ilhan Omar and Rashid Tlaib, and we have to fight these people, and we have to this, and we have to that. Like, just, you know, and here we are like, oh, we shouldn't let him into the country because it's going to be bad for Israel's PR, and la la la. You know what's bad for Israel's PR? The people who work in Israel PR.